Um, so I'm James Porter. Um, I'm at ComplexV on Twitter. And this talk is Minecraft in 30 lines of JavaScript, but you'll have to wait for that. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, over the last few years, I've gotten really excited about VR. You know, it's becoming this incredibly accessible thing. It's gone from these Google Cardboard things, which I think they were like 20 pounds originally. I ordered one from the US. You can now have seen them for like two pounds. It, it, you know, it's, it's completely crazy. And there's like, it seems like there's so many awesome applications for this in terms of games, but perhaps more interestingly in terms of things like education, data visualization, is creating applications, websites in VR, creating ex interactive experiences. Um, and you know, I'd like to get involved in that, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a games programmer, so can I do that? So I kind of had heard about various technologies, including A-Frame and React, and I went along to a hackathon in, I think it was June uh, last year, and I made the demo I'm about to show. So um, this, was, uh, this was literally the weekend after the Brexit referendum. So this is a demo I, I, I try only to give in London, but you know, that's only ever been relevant. That's not really been relevant. Um, but kind of interactive experience. Um, so, you know, I, I'm in VR. So, okay, okay, so one thing I always have to, you know, say at the start is like, this talk is about VR, but intrinsically it is a talk in a two dimensional screen, so there's limitations to what I can actually present. This is a 3D thing. In VR, it's great. You should all go away and get your Google Cardboard or buy a Google Cardboard if you don't have one and try it out at home. I'll tr this gives some kind of sense of it. Um, but you know, the Brexit referendum just happened, so I'm gonna start this running. So we now have you know, the United Kingdom um, and a series of, of, of lights going out uh, symbolizing uh, the no vote in order of regions which voted no in proportion. So the West Midlands went first there, for example. A uh, number of quotes. So th this was something I made at the hackathon uh, earlier this year. Uh, you know, I, I made this in a matter of hours, and I, I know nothing basically about 3D graphics programming and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so I was using these technologies, which I'm going to introduce in this talk. Um, so you know, we get to the end of this animation, the lights go out. They're still on in in, in Scotland, Northern Ireland, and London, and then you know, 10 p.m. results votes in. Uh, darkness descends in the UK. Um, so, uh, so it's, it's London, so I probably only pissed off like 10% of the audience here, so that, that's kind of a, um, why this works here, but probably not so well in the West Midlands. Um, okay, so the plan for this talk is, um, you know, I'm going to try and talk about a way of getting into VR for the non-specialist. We're at LNUG, so you know, it's about like JavaScript developers. Can we do VR? Can we do it um, efficiently, quickly, in a way that works, in a way that's structured? I'm going to quickly introduce A-Frame, talk about using React with A-Frame. Just like a little show of hands, who does React development or at least is somewhat familiar with React? So that's, that's like at least 50%, so that's good. Um, I'll, I'll show a little demo, like the kind of Hello Virtual World, and then get to Minecraft in, li literally it's about 30 lines of code. Depends how you add it, add it up, but it, it genuinely is about 30 lines of code. So like talking about game development is this, this horrible industry in one sense in that it, like, it seems that everyone works like 80 plus hours a week and they all have a horrible time and they don't get paid very much and they get beaten by their managers and stuff. But that, that seems terrible. And it seems like kind of VR could be that way. Like if it's about 3D interactive graphics stuff, is it about games development? Is it a horrible world that I would like to run away from as quickly as possible? Or is it something when, where you can create stuff efficiently um, I'm obviously going to argue the latter um, and try to kind of demo how you can bring modern JavaScript technologies like hot module reloading or at least live reloading in this talk, some of the recent ES6 plus features, um, NPM modules and so on into it. So the stuff I'm going to present is based on A-Frame, which is a very interesting open source project from Mozilla, which allows you to create 3D stuff in the DOM. So it's, it's technically it's an entity component system. So it's based around instead of uh, perhaps you, you base it around a number of objects and then you let the, the system take care of how that is rendered, how that is experienced by the viewer. Um, you can do things like attaching geometry, materials, behaviors, and all sorts of different open source things to these DOM elements. And it allows you to get something built really quickly. Um, and you know, I have this diagram which explains how it works. Um, there's some magic involved, and it's built in FreeJS and so on. But the, here is, you know, here is like the. I think it's, this may actually be the the Mozilla Hello World A-Frame example. 
But you can kind of see how this is just a regular HTML page. We've got a single JavaScript import, so this one JavaScript file is imported. Um, and then we can create spheres, we can create boxes, we can create planes, we can create uh, sky boxes in this world without any kind of special stuff. We can just write this in an HTML file. If you run that, run that in your system, it would work. And that, that's, that's, that's great. Um, and it's really great for reuse and stuff, but it's not so structured. I don't, looking at that, I don't see how I would create an interactive application, how I would like structure my code, how I develop things. So being a kind of React developer, um, you know, I looked at how, you know, how do I use React in this? So there's a very simple way of using uh, React to do this. So, so, so React takes a bunch of JavaScript, let's say, and builds a virtual DOM thing uh, via some magic that is translated to the real DOM. And then A-Frame, via some magic, translates that into a sort of via pre.js WebGL thing. Um, there are some tensions in this, um, which aren't really so important. But I think the, you know, th this kind of combination has been used for like really substantial stuff. Like what I'm gonna show you is some of these simple demos, but like it has been used for a real project, including this project that you should all go away and look at. Um, the A-Frame React library is what I've been building on. is a very simple like binding for this that uh, brings together React and A-Frame. So let's look at an actual example. Um, so I'm gonna to have to kill a server here. Um, don't wanna do that. Um, of course, I should hopefully, if I'm using the same port, have this really simple example. So this is like the, the most basic example. It has some boxes, has some spheres. And we can move around, obviously in VR, you'd be looking around this and, and really experience it in a more interesting way. Um, so obviously this text is really, really tiny, so we're gonna switch back to the presentation. So this time I did anticipate that. Um, so this is like a basic program. So this is bringing together the kind of React integration with A-Frame. And you know, how do we create a scene? It's, it's super simple. We create this React thing, a scene, and we can add a cube to it. We can add a camera. We can add some lights. We can add, um, but more interestingly, we can, um, yeah. Uh, more interestingly, we can kind of uh, nest, nest these things. So if I have, um, if I want to think about, so one of the complications of uh, 3D space is we want to maybe place things in this space. We want to put it in a particular set of coordinates, move it around, rotate it. We can do that using uh, React and JSX so it, it, in a really, really trivial way. Like it's, but in a way that encapsulates all of that complexity. So as far as the, the program is concerned, we do this translation and there's a bunch of children inside it. Those all have that translation applied. We could also do rotations, we could do various other things. So we can kind of create these, these well-structured applications. We could respond to various events. Um, we can create objects really simply, and again, encapsulate all that complexity. If we've got some kind of interactive behavior or some kind of thing that depends on the state, all of that can be neatly encapsulated and then is nicely presented. So all of the advantages of having a kind of component system that many of us have probably seen using React can apply to the, that kind of three-dimensional world. Um, so let's have a look at the Minecraft example. Um, so let's kill that. PM. Yeah, that's optimistic. It's just that, isn't it? Um, so the demo, if it loads, did I get the right npm client? Yep. Um, this is this is literally only thirty lines of code, sort of. Um, but we have a world which we can look about. We have various cubes, and we can mine them away. Um, and this works in VR. Um, so this is kind of a very kind of poor man's Minecraft, but it's 30 lines of code. Um, so let's have a look at that code. So this is it. Like this is basically all of the code that was involved in that demo. Um, 
apart from the generating some random number location stuff. So we, we literally can take that kind of um, three-dimensional world and attach real interactivity, real um, ways of engaging with it. So we're updating this state in a simple way and then mapping that back into a three-dimensional world which the user can then experience. So we can create all sorts of like, data visualizations or interactive applications in a similar way. Um, but all of the complexity is kind of abstract away. It's all very maintainable and structurable, stru well structured. If we wanted to use like Redux or something, we could use this very simply. Um, so here is, uh, th this, this demos some of the, the things we can do with objects in the world. So in this case, we just have an on click. So like the, the Minecraft uh, mining thing, if you click in a cube, something happens. Um, so we can just attach a, an event uh, handler in the standard kind of React way. So the way React, if you're working with the DOM, is gonna be on press. Actually, sorry, that's React Native. On click is the, the, the standard DOM thing. Um, we can also do various things like on my center or on my sleeve. So we can have kind of hover effects. So based on the way the user is looking, there's something could change in the world. So we, but we have that nice way of encapsulating that and structuring things. Um, if you're interested in getting started with this, there, I've got some free sort of simple demos in this GitHub repo. Um, and yeah, I'll probably tweet this at some point. Um, cool. So yeah, I don't know like, if anyone has any questions, I, I do have some extra sort of bonus things I can talk about, but um, like, does this make sense? Does, do, um, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, so there are, oh yeah, the other thing I should talk about, yeah, there is, uh, so Facebook have a project like React VR, which is like the official Facebook, well, semi-official open source Facebook version of this in a way, so that's gonna kind of cut out the, the middleman, I guess, here, which is the, instead of using React to generate DOM, which A-Prim then handles and renders, it's gonna cut that out, probably do some things more efficiently, but it would be very easy, of course, to swap out a lot of the, the underlying stuff from this to the, the, the kind of React VR, if it's officially sanctioned, and it becomes mature at some point in time. Um, yeah, so, um, I don't know how I'm doing in time. I can talk a little bit more, or? Okay, that was ambiguous. Um, I mean, okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll rattle through these two more slides uh, quickly then. Um, so the, the A-Frame React library, it's a really simple file. It's like literally basically 144 lines of code. And mostly it's about converting things from a React JavaScript object world to things that A-Frame and the DOM sort of understand, which is very ugly ways of expressing properties. And you can do things like lighting and very simply. So it's not just about objects. You can add lights. You can add various kinds of things to the world in a really simple way. I, I have done quite a bit of stuff with React Native. Um, I mean, interesting, interestingly, React Native um, is, is effectively what this is doing, albeit in an indirect way. It's providing a different rendering target for React. It's converting from a JavaScript world to a WebGL world in a kind of similar way to uh, React Native would convert from JavaScript to uh, iOS or Android or, or other platforms. So I, I, I think something like this could work in natively and maybe even be a more efficient way of doing it. I'd imagine it would require uh, some very you know, intricate low-level work that I'm very unfamiliar with in, a, in the same way as I think there are some game frameworks for uh, like called things like Ejecta which take uh, kind of a JavaScript game engine and run it in an environment which is not a web browser for performance. I imagine that would be possible in native devices, but you know, it doesn't exist yet. Thanks very much. Thanks.